Member must call. Mr. Speaker. Yep. Luke Karako. Uh, I, sir, I stand to take this, uh, this call uh, as the final speaker uh, speaking on behalf of the Weathertight Homes Resolution Services Amendment Bill. Um, and I will continue to be audacious as well, uh, if I could, particularly um, when talking about this bill, sir, because of the fact that there is nothing like being right at the coalface of a situation like this, where you actually know people, um, you've met people, and you've heard about the tragic circumstances of this unfortunate situation. So before I uh, do that, I would just like to um, pick up on a couple of comments that have been made, in particular, around uh, Christchurch and the rebuild, because on that side of the house, sir, the glass always seems to be half empty. Because of the fact, sir, is that there is some incredible work, sir, that is going on there around the Christchurch rebuild. Sir, last weekend was the largest Kapahaka festival in the whole of the world. Over 20 odd thousand people came to Christchurch and it was the festival of Tamatatini. Sir, the situation is, is that I was fortunate enough to actually be talking to a number of those people that actually came to Christchurch, and particularly on the first day and on the last day. And, sir, what they were saying is that, isn't this incredible? Isn't this incredible? Because this city, sir, this city is actually being rebuilt. Isn't it amazing? So I just want to make that point first of all. I just want to make that point. Sir, the other situation really is coming back to the bill and the fact, sir, is that being the last speaker, it has been really interesting listening um, to the 11 previous speakers. And I just want to make um, a few points of an overview, sir, of the um, conversation of, of the presentations. And there are, sir, I picked up around 13 points which I think are really pertinent to this, um, th this actual debate. The first thing, sir, is the fact is that, OK, around 80,000 New Zealanders have been affected by this unfortunate situation of leaky homes. And the first major point, which is a consensus across the House, is that there is no silver bullet for this situation. That's the first point. The second point, sir, is that, indeed, people have been through hell and back again. The third point is that politics aside, politics aside, there is goodwill across the parties to find a pathway in order that people stuck in the leaky home situa situation can see a way through. And that is really the general view right across the House. The next point, sir, is that we all want this um, issue, this situation, brought to a timely resolution. The next point was that originally it was up to the owners to find their own leaky home costs. Well, guess what? Under the national government, government help is there. Right. Help is there. The next one, sir, is that this bill carries forward the good work that has already been done to rectify this unfortunate situation. The other part, sir, is that uh, a general consensus too, is that there has been no real duty of care in some ways by local bodies. The next part is that there has been a number of speakers that have blamed um, the deregulation of the building industry on the situation. Next point is that there is, there is the opportunity now which is happening to actually remedy 
the technical and the administrative aspects of this by way of this bill. The next part of this is that we're all in agreement too that a sensible refinement of this Act in regards to the financial assistance is here. The next part of it is that what this bill does, and we're all in agreement with this, is that it does indeed uh, create the, the avoidance of unnecessary litigation moving forward. And the other part, sir, that I make the point um, is the fact that 70 houses is better than nothing. And I think that's a really, really important point. Sir, when looking at this, when looking at this bill, um, to me and to my colleagues on this side of the House, it really does exemplify the fact that the national government does support vulnerable New Zealanders. That's the, that's the whole essence here. And it's another very, very good example of what we are doing for those who actually are vulnerable because of this situation. The next part of it, sir, is the fact that National's Better Public Services Program, this is really focused on getting better results for New Zealanders and giving them the support that they need. And this is what this bill, and this is what this bill does. This is what it does. The Weatherlight Homes Resolution Services Act, sir, and this is the, um, the, the, the beginning and the, of, of the situation of help is on its way, came through in 2006 and was amended in 2011 to establish the financial assistance package. And this was to help owners of the legal homes to get their homes repaired. That was the important thing. And, sir, I started off by saying that I have met these people. I've met them on their doorsteps. I've met them in my office um, in the Port Hills. I've met them at various sort of functions and things. And, sir, one of the things that they have told me is the fact that, yes, they have a leaky home. At the, at the beginning of that, when they found that they had a leaky home, there was very, very little in the way of help. But they continually tell me now is that if it wasn't for the situation created by this government of help, assistance, um, they would have lost all of their confidence in moving forward. And I think that's a really important part of this as well. So, the other part of it is what they tell me is that um, it's terminology as well. Actually, what does um, the terminology of um, something that means, you know, built, what does that actually mean? So they've actually seen light at the end of the tunnel for that because the fact is that there is indeed um, more and in better interpretation uh, of this uh, kind of legislation moving forward. So, sir, in conclusion then, the Weather Tide Homes legislation seeks to avoid unnecessary litigation. We've said that. That would divert resources away from repairing leaky homes. Again, there are 70 properties, better than nothing. And the, but the bill does not change anything about the financial assistance package. It simply removes the doubt. And that is the whole essence of this as well. It removes the doubt and it provides certainty for claimants who want to access it. The, the next one is that certainty was a matter of key importance raised in the submissions on this issue, and which I just highlighted uh, a few minutes ago as well. Sir, the points in this bill are important to the ongoing validity of the financial assistance package, ensuring as many homeowners as possible can access the resolution service and financial assistance package and reducing the risk to the Crown of possible litigation about the validity of the criteria. So finally, it is indeed the fact that not only do we have this uh, legislation that's been put forward by the Honourable Nick Smith in the fact of rectifying um, and embellishing um, the original legislation. Sir, it's also um, a situation by where not only are we doing this for leaky homes, but if you actually bother to actually 
and I'm saying this for my colleagues across the House, to open your eyes when you go to Christchurch and see the incredible work that's been done on the rebuild. Ora, kia ora. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Members, this debate is concluded. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Weathertight Homes Resolution <coughs> Services Amendment Bill first reading. The question is that the Weathertight Homes Resolution Services Amendment Bill be considered by the Local Government and Environment Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. We're waiting for a minister. The minister needs to move um, that the, uh, the the report back date. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. On behalf of the minister, I move that the committee report uh, to the. No, House. no, no, no. There's wordings for I this. I'll ask, the the, I'll ask the whip to give her the wording. Thank we you. We must have this right. Very good. Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. I move that the Weather High, uh, Tight Homes Resolution Services amended, Amendment Bill be reported to the House by 31 July 2015. The question is that the motion be agreed. Order. We're, order. We're having a vote now. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I call on Government Order of the Day number three. Radiation Safety Bill, first reading. Uh, the Hon